friendship could be. My little pony. Until you all shared its magic with me. Big adventure. Tons of fun. A beautiful heart, faithful and strong. Sharing kindness. It's an easy feat. And magic makes it all complete. You have mine. We open on a shadowy figure making its way to a shady looking shop. May I help you, traveler? The Alicorn Amulet is one of the most mysterious and powerful of all the known magical charms. I think that's the first time they used the word Alicorn on this show. Fans had been calling Celestia and Luna that the whole time, but I think this was the first time the show acknowledged the term. I'm afraid this is far too dangerous. Would you like that gift wrapped? Predictable, but still funny. Sometime later... Don't be scared, little friends. Twilight is wonderful with magic. Anything happens to them, Twilight, so help me. Twilight's magic has gotten a lot better since she accidentally crushed me and Applejack with a giant snowball. I just realized that's a reference to winter wrap-up. Twilight is planning to do some kind of magic display involving Fluttershy's animals, and Fluttershy is nervous about it. Nothing bad will happen to them. I know! Understandable, but this is Fluttershy. Stop! They can't take it! Someone's projecting. <laughs> Meanwhile, the animals are having a ball. Princess Celestia's gonna love it! Thanks, Spike. I have to be at my best when she arrives with the delegates from Saddle Arabia. I can't believe she's trusting me with the entertainment. And then suddenly Rainbow Dash. <laughs> Poor Rarity. This shade of brown should only be used by accents! Well, well, well. If it isn't... Twilight Sparkle. And if it isn't Trixie. Notice how her eyes glowed red for a second. Looks like her magic has gotten a lot better. Also notice that she's wearing a black cape now to show her change in demeanor. Anyway, she challenges Twilight to a magic duel, where the loser will be exiled from Ponyville. Forever! Forget it! I'd never make a deal like that! Your choice! I love how Spike just looks annoyed. Why are you doing this? Why? It turns out that after Twilight defeated the Ursa Minor, Trixie became a laughingstock all over Equestria. Not sure why that would happen, but okay. She even ended up at the Pie family's rock farm. Hey! You're lucky a rock farm would take the likes of you! I love Pinkie Pie defending her heritage. The magic of windows. Look at poor Aloysius trying to catch as many books as he can. So Trixie's going to cause trouble until Twilight agrees to the duel, so Twilight is backed into a corner. Poor Pinky. It's actually pretty clever that Trixie made it a point to take out half the main six, even if it's in a comical way. Not like the show is going to imply that violence is the answer, but there's an in-story reason why they don't all just gang up on her and kick her butt or something. Let's duel. Excellent. <laughs> or maybe not. Well, Twilight has already agreed to the duel anyway, so they're stuck. Pinkie Pie haters must love this episode, assuming they exist. But if you lose, you're the one banished from this one-horse town! It's more like a one-dragon town, there's plenty of horses. Draw! <gasps> Trixie definitely has the upper hoof. But I'm impressed by Twilight's ability to conjure a Paris sprite from nothing. I suppose she could have teleported it, but that's still cool. And now Trixie has a stash that would make Yosemite Sam jealous. Come to think of it, the running joke with a mustache was in the previous Trixie episode, so it's appropriate that now she has one. Snip, snails, step forward! Uh, what is it? Oh, the great and powerful Trixie! <laughs> Boy, does this episode put snips and snails through the ringer. Well, they did kind of have it coming for waking up the Ursa Minor. But how could you do an age spell? That's only for the highest level unicorns. <laughs> Twilight tries to change them back, but to no avail. Trixie is the highest level unicorn. <laughs> Enough, Trixie! Well, the rest of the main six does kind of come to Twilight's defense, but they don't really do anything. 
To be fair, there probably isn't a whole lot they can do. And now Twilight is thrown out of Ponyville, literally. It's okay, guys. Aw. I'll figure something out. Just take care of each other. And keep an eye on Trixie. Twilight? Poor Spike. So Twilight goes off on her own to figure out what to do about Trixie. So who else do I know who understands strange and powerful magic? Zakora, of course. No wonder you're dour. It's an abuse of power. And she is very confident that she knows how to beat Trixie. I'll show you the way to make sure she won't stay. If Twilight will ever stop knocking over her tea. Meanwhile, Trixie has taken over Ponyville. How long do I have to wait for my applesauce facial? I'm not touching that one. And wow, she's horrible. I mean, yeah, the tickle torture is kid-friendly, but look at all the other stuff she's doing. I thought I told you to dance! Damn it, after too many pinkies, I can't stop noticing reused pinky animations. A pony has to help us! Back to the Everfree Forest, Twilight is doing some pretty impressive training. <laughs> but she loses focus. There is much, much that I can teach, but the answer you need may still be out of reach. Zakora's so kind of like Yoda, but with a totally different speech impediment. In Ponyville, the rest of the main six is trying to do some research to figure out how Trixie got so powerful so quickly. And then Fluttershy randomly opens to the right page. Um, this sounds an awful lot like Trixie's magic. She wants me to grow apples with no peels! Typical. Um, there's a picture here of that necklace Trixie wears. It's called the Alicorn Amulet, and whoever wears it is blessed with untold- Poor Fluttershy. Anyway, of course it was the Alicorn Amulet that strengthened her magic and corrupted her, and no one else can take it off of her. I know who's got the goods to get into those woods. It must be Fluttershy! Fluttershy is great in this. So they need Twilight, but Trixie has set it up so that if anyone tries to leave Ponyville, she'll be alerted. Sometime the next day... Holy crap, see what I mean about how horrible she's being? Wouldn't it be faster if we had some... Uh, wheels? The great and powerful Trixie doesn't trust wheels. Now pull faster! But this is pretty ingenious. Fluttershy has a couple of her beaver friends beating on the force field. So Trixie rolls her eyes and lets them out with their log. where inside the log was Fluttershy, dressed like a bunny for some reason. So the animals have discovered that Twilight is in the Everfree Forest. Yeah, you're not getting out of this, Fluttershy. So she catches up with Twilight and tells her everything. If Trixie's tricks have you in a fix, you must mix your magic and use the six. Use the six? That's it! Zakora, you're a genius! Zakora's like, I know it. You. So Twilight goes back to Ponyville to face Trixie. I know about the Alicorn amulet. I know you cheated. And, I thought you and she ended up getting her own amulet with blackjack and hookers. It's way more powerful than your measly little Alicorn amulet. Trixie refuses a rematch at first, but she has to find out about this amulet that Twilight has, so she agrees. Okay, okay, you're on. Later that night, oh God, poor Mayor Bear is in a big bird cage. Snips, snails. So Trixie does the age spell again. <laughs> um, Applejack, Rarity, could you help me please? And Twilight matches it. So you can do an age spell, big deal. And then cranks it up to 11. She also duplicates Rainbow Dash. Yeah! And has Pinkie Pie play 10 instruments. Can turn a mare into a stallion. Big deal, fanfic writers do that all the time. Yep. Looks like my amulet is more powerful than yours. Hey! I shall now rule all of Equestria! So, Trixie takes off the alicorn amulet so she can put the new one on. Gaze upon an ever greater and powerfuler Trixie! <laughs> I don't need that old alicorn amulet. I have this! And of course it does nothing. That, that tickles! <laughs> tickles? That was supposed to make you writhe in agony! Because of course it was fake. And just a ploy to get Trixie to take off the alicorn amulet. But uh, how did you do those spells? It's easy to guess how most of Twilight's spells were done, since Applejack and Rarity each have a little sister, and Applejack has a big brother and a grandmother, while Dash and Fluttershy are both Pegasi. It's just a matter of painting characters to look like other characters. What about the pony with the ten instruments? 
That's not magic, that was just Pinkie Pie. Pretty typical Pinkie Pie, actually. Later that night, Twilight is using her real magic to entertain the delegates from Saddle Arabia. And there they are. Aren't they pretty? You can make it, Fluttershy. <laughs> Meanwhile, Trixie supplies some unexpected fireworks. Also, Angel Bunny fell twice. What? It's the least I could do. Notice that she's back in her old costume, indicating that she's back to her old self. You can forgive me, can't you? Oh, how could you not forgive that face? Twilight's like, easy. Sure. Don't you think the great, unapologetic Trixie is the most magnificent humble pony you've ever seen? Bragging about being humble? Oh god, don't give me Mare Duel flashbacks. A very dignified exit. And so ends- Oh wait, we're forgetting something. And now Twilight has fourth wall breaking powers. <gasps> that was great. I like this episode a lot. To be honest though, as an adult, you can pretty much predict how this whole situation will play out and figure out right away what Twilight's plan is. I mean, I knew what was going on as soon as I noticed that it was Rarity and Applejack who were being de-aged. Since each has a little sister who is a pretty prominent character. Hell, the way Twilight defeats Trixie is kind of in the vein of David and Goliath, where the hero beats the villain using brain over brawn. And that's a pretty classic and well-known tale. It's definitely aimed at kids who aren't so genre savvy, but that's okay. It's one of those where the journey is still fun even when you know exactly where it's going and where all the stops are. It was fun seeing Trixie return and I even have some thoughts on her first episode and how I've changed my mind on some things, which I'll make a separate video about. For now, the short version is that Trixie worked a lot better as an antagonist here than she did in Boastbusters. And yeah, she's a lot of fun and I get why she's a fan favorite. I guess that's about all I have to say about this episode. It's fairly straightforward and put together well. Next up is Sleepless in Ponyville. See you then. I have no mouth, and I must scream.